Hello and welcome back to Heiner's workshop lessons and off-grid auto electrics. Today we're going to talk about batteries and we are going to compare two of the most common batteries in the industry with each other which are LifePo 4 batteries also known as lithium batteries and AGM batteries. Uh, to know what type of battery you should go for there's usually some criteria that you have to think about. One is weight Another one is space available and even another one is cost, which is also quite a significant factor. To compare the cost of batteries with each other, it is important to think about the lifespan that you want to use the battery for as well. So for example, when we get somebody in the shop and they say they just want to build a vehicle that they want to travel Australia with and then they want to sell it again and they are driving a lot then we usually say a lithium battery is probably not the greatest idea for you in case you can carry enough weight and you've got enough room available because you will not get a return on your investment because the lithium battery will work cheaper in the long run. To give you an example about this, this is a 100 amp hour life pool 4 lithium battery from Amtron that will cost about $950. Under the bonnet here we have got a full river 105 amp hour AGM battery. This battery will cost $400, roughly, give or take. Uh, this battery here, you can use the full 100 amp hours, while that battery under the bonnet, which is the AGM, you can only use about half of the capacity, which will give you about 50, 60 amp hours. Uh, that means if you need 100 amp hour usable capacity, you need two of these batteries to replace one of these batteries, which means you're already up for $800 for the AGM batteries and you're still only $950 for the lithium battery. Now, to bring the time factor into it, if you want to keep your setup for a long period of time, let's say 10 years, you will most likely get away with just one of those lithium batteries because they will last 7 to 10 years if you treat them right. While an AGM battery, depending on how you treat it, will last about 3 to 5 years, which means after about half the time that you use your setup, you will have to replace your $800 battery bank, which will then bring you up to about $1,600 for your battery bank over a 10 year period, while you still only just $950 for your lithium battery. So these are considerations that you have to take into account before you buy a battery for your setup. Another point to talk about is the performance of your batteries. While an AGM battery is really good if you want to take a small current draw out of it over a long period of time. AGM batteries tend to even overperform uh, from their specifications. So you probably get even more power out of it than uh, you think you would. Just keep the current draw really small. That is really important for an AGM battery. As soon as you start to draw big currents from an AGM battery, the voltage drops down really quickly and you get a lot less power out of the battery than what is actually specified. That is an important factor to take into consideration as well. While a lithium battery is a really good all-around battery so the voltage of a lithium battery will stay almost stable no matter if you put a big or a small load on there which means you can run big inverters of a lithium battery very well while an AGM battery and big inverters that usually doesn't work together very well unless you can recharge very often and very quickly. On the downside for a lithium battery is that you're usually limited to a maximum current output. Most of the lithium batteries have got 100 amp maximum current output or 175 maximum amp current output. There are other ones as well that go a bit higher, but you're usually always limited. While an AGM battery can deliver 500-600 amps, not for a very long time, but it's got a very high peak current. To overcome these shortages of peak current problems, you can put lithium batteries in parallel to each other. Not all of them, so you have to check the specification of the battery before you connect them, but most of them you can actually put up to four batteries in parallel, and that means if you've got a battery that's only capable of supplying 100 amp maximum current, and you put another two, three, 
four of them in parallel to it, you can then get 400 amp out of your battery bank, which will drive even big inverters. So if you want to use a lithium battery and you need a high current output, sometimes it makes sense not to buy one big battery with let's say 100 or 175 amp output, but rather buy a few smaller ones and get a high current output that way. I think the most important point in between lithium and AGM batteries is weight and space. Because we're always limited. If you install something into a vehicle, caravan, camper trailer, boat, the space that you got available and the amount of weight that you can carry is almost always an issue and that is where lithium batteries so life pro 4 batteries have got a big advantage over agm batteries a because you can use the full capacity of the battery and b because they're just so much lighter this here for example weighs about 12 kilograms while the battery in there i wouldn't even attempt to lift with one arm that is about 30 kilograms even a little bit more and it's only got half the capacity so to actually get the same capacity you will get out of a 100 amp hour lithium battery you'll need two 100 amp hour AGM batteries means 60 kilograms 12 kilograms that is really important because for a lot of setups 50 kilogram difference means a lot of luggage a lot of water or other bits and pieces that you have to pack before you actually go over your GVM. So that is a very important point. Also, two of these batteries obviously take up twice the amount of room that one of these batteries takes. And that is a massive advantage as well because it's so much easier to build a few lithium batteries in than, or even just one lithium battery, than get a few of these in. Also when you, and we do that a lot, you have to make a hold down clamp for a lithium battery. It's quite easy because it doesn't weigh a lot. If you have to make a hold down clamp for AGM battery, it has to be seriously tough to actually stay where it's supposed to be staying. So that they are some things that you also have to consider when you choose over AGM and lithium batteries. The last point I want to talk about when it comes to batteries to deep cycle batteries is heat. It is talked about a lot and there's a lot of confusion going on about batteries under the bonnet, not under the bonnet. As you can see, we've got an AGM battery under the bonnet here, which is something where most people say it shouldn't be installed under the bonnet. Uh, in this vehicle, it's not as crucial. It is in the front where it gets a lot of airflow, but as soon as you stop the engine, it still gets really hot here. Uh, the batteries that we use for these setups are full river AGM batteries. The only reason we use them is because we've tested them for over five years under the bonnet of a 79 series Land Cruiser, where they are mounted in the far corner, right towards the firewall, right on top of the turbocharger. It's probably one of the worst spots to install them to. And they were installed in the vehicle that is driving out to Leonora and stays in the desert, even in the middle of summer, a fair bit. We made sure the battery was always charged properly through solar and also through DC-DC charger, but it was also running a fridge for five years almost constantly. And after five years, that battery was still okay when the vehicle was sold. So to me, that's a pretty good point of saying, yes, that does actually work. So for under bonnet, if you need a deep cycle battery, we usually recommend use an AGM battery. We do not ever recommend to use a lithium battery, even though you can find lithium batteries that are warranted for under the bonnet installation. It is a bit in the fine print because they're usually warranted for three years. If you get a three year warranty on a lithium battery that costs more than double some of them that are warranted for under bonnet installation will even cost four times what a normal AGM battery will cost. You do want to make sure you get the whole lifespan out of that battery. Unless you say, I don't care, I'm happy to buy another one after three years and pay another $1,500 for that battery. I think you should consider not using lithium under the bonnet. There isn't a lot of experience around yet. Nobody has really tested what happens after three or four years with lithium under 
the bonnet of a vehicle because we haven't had them for that long yet. But for me the most crucial point is that all electric vehicle manufacturers, all of them, there's no exception as far as I'm aware, use active cooling for their battery banks in their electric vehicles and they make sure the batteries do not get past 45 degrees because in a live Pro 4 setup, which is the same setup that is in this battery, that is in any other live Pro 4 battery, the chemistry is all the same. It's also the same in the electric vehicles. As soon as this chemistry mixture gets past 45 degrees, it gets so reactive, your 100 amp hour battery will even turn into a 150 amp hour battery, but it's just burning itself out way too quickly. So for electric vehicle manufacturers to keep their seven year warranty on their battery packs in there, which are quite expensive and really huge, they have to put active cooling in there. To me, that is something to consider if you think about lithium under the bonnet. If, if lithium batteries would happily live more than seven years in a hot environment, no electric vehicle manufacturer would install active cooling in their vehicles. It would just be too much cost for it. Uh, it's not proven yet, but we'll see in the future how that goes. Uh, that is it for today about picking your batteries. I hope that gave you a bit of an idea what the differences are in between AGM batteries and lithium batteries, which are the most commonly used one in our industry. Uh, next time we are going to talk about charging your battery and we're going to talk about all the different sources where you can charge your battery from. As always, all the information that I just talked about you can also find on a PDF that is downloadable from our website perthpro.com.au. You can find the link in the description down below and you can download all the information so you can have another read through it. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you got any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.